Okay, in this video I'm going to do um, a couple just basic, relatively basic limit problems involving absolute value. Um, and there's just really kind of a one thing that you have to remember with absolute value to kind of get started. So again, in the first one I want to look at the limit as x approaches 1 of absolute value x minus 1 over x minus 1. Okay, so of course, again, the first thing you try to do with uh, a limit problem is plug in the value, but notice if you plug in 1, we'll simply get 0 over 0. For those of you that have seen L'Hopital's rule, um, well, I mean, I guess you could think about taking a derivative, but how do you take the derivative of absolute value? So we're going to talk about a slightly different way, just an algebraic way. Um, and the thing that you need to basically remember I'm going to first look at the absolute value of x. Remember, you can break up absolute value of x as a piecewise defined function. I'm going to break it up for stuff greater than or equal to 0. Um, let me make the first interval um, less than 0. And then I'll make the second interval greater than or equal to 0. For the second part, well, if you take a number that's already positive and you plug it inside the absolute value, um, you just leave it alone because it's already the correct value, it's already positive. But if the number you put inside the bars is negative, that's what the first condition says, it wouldn't be correct to say it's this when you break it up as a piecewise function because, again, x is actually negative by assumption, so we need to tack on an extra negative. Okay, so the moral of the story is when you have absolute value, you either basically just remove the, the absolute value, the bars, and put it in parentheses, or you put it in parentheses and you have to put a, a minus sign out front. Typically with these limit problems, that's what you have to do is just rewrite it depending on um, you know, the, the, the limit. Okay, so notice again, the other thing I want to point out too is we break it up at the value where the inside is zero. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here with absolute value of x minus 1. I'm going to break it up. Okay, so notice if I break up absolute value of x minus 1. Okay, well now the place I'm going to break it up is going to be for at, at basically at 1 because that's what makes the inside 0. So we'll make it less than 1 and then greater than or equal to 1. That'll be my 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 um, restrictions on the domain. Notice if I take something, um, I'm going to do the second one again. Notice if I take something that's greater than or equal to 1, when I plug it inside of the absolute value, I'm already going to get a positive number, or 0. But basically that value I get would be correct. Okay. If I plug a value in smaller than 1 inside of the bars, it's going to be a negative number. So x minus 1 is now negative. I'll tag an extra negative in there to make it positive. All right, so that's one idea that we're going to incorporate into this problem. So, okay, again, we're interested in the limit as x approaches 1 um, of this absolute value of x minus 1 over x minus 1. Well, notice our absolute value function kind of changes at x equals 1. Um, and in general, for a limit to exist, remember the left-hand limit has to equal the right-hand limit. So what we're going to have to now look at is the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. And then we're also going to have to look at the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. If these are equal, the limit exists. If not, well then, um, the, this limit as x approaches 1 does not exist. Okay, so let's calculate this first limit, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. In the denominator, we don't have to do anything. We just leave it alone. The whole question is, how do we go about removing the bars on the x minus 1? Well, if I'm taking 1 from the left, that means I'm taking values smaller than 1. And it says if you use x coordinates that are smaller than 1, you have to replace the absolute value with this first version, the negative version. Okay, 
So again, we're taking x coordinates that are smaller than 1. You have to replace the absolute value with the first version. And now we can simply cancel out the x minus 1s. We would be left with a negative 1 on top. Remember, the limit of a constant is just the constant. So the left-hand limit is going to work out to be negative 1. We have to do the same thing with the right-hand limit. Again, in the denominator, you're just going to get x minus 1. In the, <coughs> excuse me, in the numerator, um, again, you think, what do I replace the absolute value with? And in this case, since x is going to be, OK, so now we're, we're approaching x from the right. So we're approaching, excuse me, we're approaching 1 from the right. x is approaching 1 from the right. So that means we're taking x coordinates that are larger than 1. So we, instead of the absolute value of x minus 1, um, it says we can just remove the bars. And again, I like to put it in parentheses. Just uh, I think it's a good, good form. It'll keep you from making mistakes. Again, we can cancel out the x minus 1s. You can think about there as being a positive 1 left. So the right-hand limit actually equals positive 1. Well, since the left-hand limit doesn't equal the right-hand limit, our conclusion is that this original limit does not exist. Okay? So we can conclude that the limit as x approaches 1 of absolute value of x minus 1 over, whoops, over x minus 1 we would say that this limit does not exist. Okay, So the left-hand limit and the right-hand limits individually do exist, but the limit as a whole does not exist. OK, let me do uh, maybe one more quick one. Um, and I'm going to go through this one a little bit faster. So suppose we want to calculate the limit as x approaches, let's say, 0 from the left of 1 over x minus 1 over the absolute value of x. OK, so again, in this case, we could plug in simply um, x equals 0, but we're going to get 1 over zeros, and that's not going to work. So again, the key to this problem is basically just getting rid of the absolute value in the appropriate manner. That's kind of the whole idea. OK, so again, we saw the definition a second ago for absolute value of x. Again, we said if the x coordinates are less than 0, we have to tack on an extra negative to make it positive. And we said it was just plain old x if x was greater than or equal to 0. Well, again, in this case, x is approaching 0 from the left. So that means we're using x coordinates less than 0. So we need to replace our absolute value of x. Again, we're going to replace this absolute value of x with a negative x, okay, based on this portion of the um, definition of absolute value of x. OK. So, all right, well, that's at least the first part down. We still have to calculate this limit. So notice two negatives make a positive. So really, we have the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of 1 over x plus 1 over x. Well, we have common denominators, so we can simply add 1 over x and 1 over x to get 2 over x. OK, at this point, things are almost simplified down. A couple different ways you could think about this limit. So to me, um, we're taking 2 and we're dividing it by a number that's close to 0, but it's negative. OK, well, if you take any fixed number here, like 2, and divide it by a number that's getting closer to 0, first off, the um, absolute value of the number will get large. It'll go towards infinity. So 2 over a number that's getting smaller and smaller and smaller is going to go to infinity. But since it's negative, it's going to approach negative infinity. So we can conclude this limit is negative infinity. Likewise, if you know the graph of 1 over x, <clears throat> 2 over x looks basically like the same thing. So 1 over x does this, and then it goes down over here. 
2 over x, it's just going to be a, sh or a, a stretch, but it still has that same shape. So again, as you approach the x coordinate of 0 from the left, it says you're going to go down towards the y values will go towards negative infinity. Okay, so I hope these couple of absolute value problems make some sense. If not, feel free to post comments, or if you would like to see some more complicated ones, um, let me know and I'll try to get some out there.